Welcome to Art and Imagination with Jenna. So glad to see you. Remember that anything that you can imagine, you can draw and paint. getting ready to finish up with some of our watercolor that we have done in the past weeks and I've got to first wet down my palette because I don't know what colors I'm going to use just yet but I got to have my palette all wet for the colors you know you can keep watercolor forever in a dry form and just wet it and there it is and I have my little bucket of water or bowl, whatever you want to call it. I also want to spray with my uh, milk my water sprayer. I want to kind of spray lightly my uh, paper that I'm going to be working on. And we're just going to kind of give it a shower and that will kind of lend that the, the uh, colors will blend in. And we're going to use a big round brush and I don't know, it's a number six, I believe, but I want to get it all wet and dried off. And I want to get into the darker browns because we're going to uh, make our uh, line here for our water area. And we're just going to kind of brisk that along. We don't want a straight line. We want it kind of broken up a bit. And by having the water on there, it softens whatever I put on here. Now we're going to go in and we're going to take the brush and we're going to push up with it from those lines and just kind of make some brush along there, meaning the, the trees and the bushes and stuff, not the brush. <laughs> We're just kind of making a little bit more foreground with those, those backgrounds and everything. And we're just gonna just make it kind of nice because these ducks that are flying in like it all messy. They don't like it nice and neat. So they like to hide within those brushes, the brush back there. And I don't think I'll put snow in this, even though it's a winter scene. And I'm going to get these trees in here a little bit better, a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of bluish black color along with the brown and mix those two together. And I've got a tree that's laying back in here and I want just a light wash on that. And I'm just flicking my brush up to make it look like the branches to this tree. I make it interesting now. And it's just easy to do. You can make it as big as you like. The sky back there looks like there's going to be more rain. And we're having April showers where we're at. I hope you're high and dry, though. And there's this other tree. I want to kind of darken it and get, get more of a value on it so that we can see it really well. And we're going to be putting more limbs on this with a finer brush. But don't get your finger in it like I almost just did when you feel that wet on your little finger when you got it sitting up there like that. <laughs> then stop. Don't keep going. So we're just kind of filling in here and putting another wash on what we've already got on the paper. And I got to move my paper around, and I hope it's okay. 
for you to see. And I got a fine point on this brush, as you can see. It's really, you know, this brush is great for having a fine point on the edge of it. So I can do small little things coming up, the weeds and everything else like that. I don't want the weeds just straight. I just kind of want some of them to be curly in different sizes. Because this is a duck habitat. And we've got them flying in, so. And I've got a little bit of a foreground down here with some bricks. So I was going to put some bricks in here, which I still am. Like there was a wall there at one time. Get some more brown and darker color. I like my palette messy like it is because then I can find colors that, that really I like and can use over and over again. Now don't cover up all your white either that you've got down here on your paper. And we're going to worry about where the light's coming from. And I think it's coming from this side. So this side of your trees are really going to be dark. So we'll go back in there and kind of put another color value on, on this to show where the light's coming from. This is always fun to do. Now I said well, I was putting bricks in this last time and that we met. And I think I want some brick down in through here. And I'm gonna make it really bright. Because we're gonna add some color here. Like I said, I don't wanna cover up all the white that I got in there. But we will fix these bricks as we go along here. Now, as you can see, I'm leaving spaces in between, like bricks. There was a brick wall here or something. And it just kind of makes it more interesting. Maybe we'll put a duck or two on it when we get it put in. And we might have an odd brick over here, too. But as you can see, I get lighter as I go along, which is good because the light's coming from this direction. So and I, I wanted to leave that white there. So as you can see, that the bricks are drying lighter than what I'm putting on. Put a little more water with that because I don't want it just in your face bricks. Kinda. Now as I get up here in this brown, you can see that the value is gonna be different on this brick because of the brown color underneath. And we'll kind of build up this side. You know, you can take and take pictures of where you live in your area. We have a fabulous uh, photographer in our area. His name is Dana Johnson. And uh, all of us artists know who he is. And he's fabulous at taking pictures of, of our area. He's, uh, and he puts his pictures or his photographs, however you want to call it, on Facebook for us to really look at and enjoy and paint if we want. So it's nice to have Dana's uh, work in front of us many times if we don't get a chance to go out and do our own photography. But OK, that looks pretty good. Oh, it looks pretty dark, but we'll We'll lighten that up as we go along. 
Well, I think that's enough brick, but I'm going to wash out my uh, brush. And I'm going back in, and I'm going to put in the water, I'm going to put some color out there like the bricks are in the water. The, the silhouette of them, anyway. This is so much fun to create. Now we need another line for that uh, for those bricks to differentiate between the water. I'm going to do the same up here. just keep looking at it. Now I want a little bit, I want to change this water up a little bit. So I want a little bit of green into this water and blue. So I'm going into my greens and let's get some blue into this because that water is, 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 is the, the sky is making it look blue down here because it's casting its shadow but uh, we also want a little bit of green in here because that water is not always that blue where the ducks <laughs> go. And we want to make our water a little bit more interesting and colorful. I don't want it all green, but I want spots in there to, to uh, create some more value in this picture. And we'll put some down here on the bottom where these rocks are going to be. And as you see, I'm swirling it as I go along. I'm doing zigzags, which is going to give movement into the water because we're going to build this water up as we go along. Clean your brush often. And get some more blue with a little bit of green in it. And as you see, I'm holding my brush back on the back side back here so that I can, you know, move it much, much better than holding it down like this because it, it, it hinders. So therefore, I'm holding that brush back here so I can be free-flowing with it. And I'm going to put some more of this stuff in here color-wise. We want it to be pretty. And I'm working down as you can see. And I kind of got a dry brush effect here, which I love. I love doing that in my watercolors. I want it to break up. You know, no matter how old you are, this is a wonderful thing to do, is to paint with watercolors. Now I'm going to work on some of this rock over here, get some dark color into this thing. Now remember, our light's coming from here, so the tops of these rocks are going to be lighter than the bottom down here. And by putting the dark down here on this part, it's going to set that back, but we're going to set it back even farther when we get through with some of these rocks. And we want it free flowing there again. You know, when you're working on a painting, it looks like a mess until you can get it done. <laughs> At least mine do. And I think every artist has that feeling that, oh darn, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have done that. But it's fun just to tap sometimes, just to test your brush and everything. And we're going to put some weeds on here too. 
it's not going to be all rocky. I'm going to put a little green in that wash over here on this side. And it's looking to look like a little bit more like rocks are sitting there. Maybe it's building a little mountain. What do you think? So I kind of changed some of my colors up some to give it a different value at different places. You, nothing has to be perfect here. So when you're looking at this, you're going to say, oh, gee, I don't know if I like that or not. But you just keep building and keep going, and it's, it'll turn out to be okay. Now, it's hard to put light on something that you've already made dark. And white doesn't really help. It just kind of makes it a little chalky. So I'm going to introduce another color in here. Let's see, I think a gold color. Let's see if that will work for us. Put it down on this palette. Love my dirty palette. Everybody remarks on it. <laughs> Works for me though. Okay, that's going to work fine. So here I go. I'm going to make these I don't want to cover up all my dark because I want to make a difference in there. I just kind of want to tap this onto the light side. And give it more interest. And a few taps here and there. So much fun. I know some of you that are really interested in art watch Bob Ross on the weekends on PBS and all the other artists that uh, they have on there. And I watch them too. I always come away with learning something. We're always learning as artists. The more you learn, the better you get. And the more you understand about it, about what it does. Okay, that gives it a nice interest. So now I'm going to take this gold and let's see, gold and a little bit of blue because I want to uh, make a lighter color on these trees over here and get in there with that color and I'm kind of going to want to dry it off because I want it more where I can hit it on this side of the light. So we're back up on the tree again. And watercolor is all about building and layers. So much fun to do. And we only want one side of that tree to get that gold color because the light's coming from the left. So that's where we want it. And we'll put a little gold down in here too because after all there's more weeds done. And these are all fall colors, the browns and the golds. The red bricks help. And we're going to fix those bricks here in a minute. Now I want a darker brown. And I'm going to take a dark, I hate to say black, but it, I think it is black. But I'm going to put black and brown together. because I don't want it to be black, black. I want it to be a dark color. 
And I'm going to flatten out my brush on my palette so that I have kind of a nice, I want rocks. So therefore, I want to put some of these in there with the tips of my brush. Now, don't make them like they're a herd of turtles either. You just want some here and there. And when you're painting uh, different things like the ducks coming in, you don't want to just make one. So you have a few that's coming in. So you either do three, you make the odd numbers. You don't make them equal numbers. There are fives, or, but you don't want two. That's with any kind of painting that you're putting life in. And I like to put life into my, my work. And this is a little tedious for some. But it's coming together, as you can see. This takes a little bit of time. But I want kind of a rocky little ledge here. To seat these these bricks down into the to, to the ground. And we'll do a little dark in, in between because there's dirt in there. I like that little white spot there. We may make a little waterfall coming down through there. But this is all being done for these ducks that are coming in. We want to give them a happy place. <laughs> you understand that if you love animals. You want to Give your animals a happy place. And this is just, just dabbing and just kind of creating as you go along. Since I got this dark color in here, I think I'll put some more dark over here in these rocks. And maybe next time I'll draw a duck sitting here on this, this uh, set of rocks to just kind of make a stopper to go up through this way. And then we'll have a, have a limb or something coming out this way to set that back in, to set this back. Okay. Now another thing that you can do when you're making rocks and making ground cover. I'm going to show you. I'm going to put out the, the dark, the brown, and the, the black together and make a really kind of inky. My water is inky. I could probably use that. But I want quite a bit of it. The black and brown together. And before we leave, I want to be able to show you this because I know you're going to want to put some stuff in there. So, good old <laughs> toothbrush. Your old toothbrush, save them. Don't throw them away. They're good for a lot of things. As you can see, mine is pretty dirty. And I'm going to push this toothbrush into that color that I've just made. Now this could get a little messy, so I'm going to move my paper over this way a little bit. And I'm going to go along in here and just kind of give it a little spray. I don't know if you can see that it's what it's doing. But it kind of gives it a little bit more interest in your painting. I need to make more. But it gives like a little sand to your picture. And normally I would have a piece of paper. There we go. That's working better. 
but I want those little dots in there. And I'm going to put that away for now, and I'm going to take my brush. And this dark water that I have in here, we'll, and I'm going to go along and kind of take out some of those little stony looking things and keep them up there in the in the sandy area. I usually have two buckets of water, but I didn't do that today. I forgot my other little bowl. But we'll make do. You can always make do. Okay. I like it so far. Now I'll go back into this blue and this green again. And I'll put some more stuff in through there. A little bit more green. Let's fill it in to look like water. And uh, clear up some of those areas where it's all white. We want white in there for sure. And go up there and kind of, it'll take a while for those little sandy things to uh, dry because they're just droplets, is what they are. Okay. I could put my duck here, which I think I want to, on this rock. So I want to make a, another tree come out of this side. So I want more brown, a little bit more black. And we're going to put a tree in here. We're just going to take him right straight up. And as you can see, that now sets that back, that mass of land back there, it sets it back. Try not to get into my birds there. Now we're going to take him right off the canvas. So, okay. Now we'll go here and do the darks on these, the dark side. And that's going to make it bigger also. Not bigger, but uh, more perfect, I should say. But we're getting there. Somebody must have tried to build a wall here. So, so we'll just let this continue on. And we'll have to finish some of this next time that we meet, which I hope you're going to be here with me. Easy ducks coming in. Darken them up. I didn't count them, so... One, two, three, four, five. So there's five so far. So anyway, let's hope that we're making a good haven for our ducks and there's no hunters around at all. So this is fun. I hope you're having fun too. Anyway, it's almost time to close. So I will catch you next time that we meet. And have fun. Just continue on painting. I know I have to stop right now. But you can continue on with your 
your picture. And we've got to make some leaves on these things back here. So we'll do that next time. We have a lot of work still ahead of us, but we're having a good time. So I hope you're having a good time and you're drinking your iced tea and it's nice and warm where you're at. And we're going to have fun with our cloudy, rainy day because it's April showers. So I got to say probably goodbye for now. Come back and see us at the Bella Vista Community TV studio. We have fun here. Thanks for being with me today. I hope you've learned something from the lessons that I've been giving you. Just remember, if you can imagine it, you can draw it or paint it. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.